So, did you guess what the piece of gear was? That's right, TR-909, another very famous drum machine. This one is sick as well, so let's have a look at what the story is. This is a, a combination analog and digital drum machine that uses um, some analog circuitry, but also digital wave samples, PCM samples. In fact, I think it was the first drum machine to do that. So let's see what the story is. We turn this one on. And when you, you can trigger bass drum sounds, but when you trigger a snare, the only way you can turn it off is by hitting the um, second, second snare sample. But then, after a while, it stays on. You can hear it's just a scratchy knob as well, which you have to fix. But um, now it just stays on all the time. So something's wrong there, we have to check that out. And also, what else have we got? Tom as well. So the low tom just makes noise. So general chaos, things triggering and not stopping, and we're going to find out what's going on inside this thing. Inside. So we're off to a good start because none of the screws have been removed before because I can still see some, some shellac on them. So that means it probably hasn't been fiddled around with. So let's get the board out so we can access the other side. Just put some marks at different spots on the connectors so there's no way you could confuse them. They're actually different sizes anyway. Um, but I just it's a good habit to get into just to make sure you put them back the right way. And also this one in here. Now we've got this inside, we're going to take these posts out. There's a few more under there as well. So the problem I face as I probe around is if I look at the high tom circuit and I actually probe on VCO for the high tom, you can see I've got a triangular waveform, which is good. If I go and probe on the bass drum, which is also working, I've got a triangular waveform. If I probe on the oscillator for the snare drum, I've got nothing. So there's my first problem. There's no VCO happening there for the snare drum. So next stage, let's look at part of the circuit that's working and we'll go to this 4069 CMOS chip, which is part of the oscillator circuit. And if we look at this, the high time, you'll see we get a nice square wave shape on pins one, two, three. Whereas if we go to our snare drum circuit, you'll see we actually don't get anything there at all. Um, so that's looking suspect. If we go to the low tom circuit, which is down here, we also don't get anything there that looks remotely like a waveform. So um, that's a problem. Let's go to the circuit here, which is our mid tom. And you can see that gives us a nice square wave as well. So I've had a bit of a victory. These two diodes in the low tom circuit, D14, D15, they had 15 volts going across them. It should be like a minus four volts. 
So I traced that back and it turned out to be this Q16 transistor, which is a 603 uh, transistor. So I've swapped that out. It didn't have a 603, so I've used a um, the equivalent transistor. One of the most annoying things about working on this 909 has been these ribbon cables. So these just flex and flex and flex until they break and they're straight into the board. So they're a real pain to fix. And these are obviously handle the trigger signals that come into the circuit. So I've decided to um, wire them to some connectors. So I've got some um, 10 pin connectors that I've soldered to the board and then I've um, connected them to the ribbon cable. So every one of these will have a proper plug so they can be removed for testing. It means you can also run longer ones um, when you're doing fault finding. So I'm going to remove all of these because these have been inter intermittent, which has made it so hard to fault find on the main circuit. So I've got all these sorted out and then we can continue on with our testing and replacing transistors. Right, so deep into the 909. So the problem ended up being the uh, first transistor in the chain, which is Q39 for the snare and Q25 for the low tom. So they were short out and I was getting 15 volts at the diode D36, D37 and so forth. So that wasn't working. So now I've got it connected. I've got uh, new connectors onto the board so they're not going direct anymore so it's a much better way of working and I've got my kick, snap, tom low, mid, tom high ride so they're all working that was a bit overdriven there because I had the level a bit too high so I'll just do that again Kick, snare, toms, high tom. There they are. They are all working. Here we are all back together. So it's never easy. As far as gear goes, it's probably my least favorite roll and instrument to work on because it's so tightly packed in. But anyway, um, we've got it all back in. I ended up having to change the connector positions from sticking out the side of the board to on the rear, which was fun, but I got there in the end. So they worked and it all went back together. Well, this is the problem when it's the first time you've done something. I should have checked it all before I put the connectors in place, but I thought there was enough space. Anyway, um, here we are, so kick drum. Snare, and all of the controls are working again. Low tom, which was the problem. High tom, high tom, rim shot, clap, closed, second hi-hat. Both of them together make open. Closed, closed. That sort of stuff. And crash, and ride. And actually the crash in here is a, a Piesty crash. And I'll put a link in where you can actually see the engineer from Roland talking about how they got that sound in there, which is really interesting. So follow the link. So yeah, 909, given the front surface a bit of a clean, cleaned all the pots so they move a little bit easier. And um, it's all working again, which is great. And I'm sure the owner will be very happy.